Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and today we're showing you around the Roman Colosseum, the Forum and the Palatine Hill. I'll be showing you how to get tickets, how to get in, what to see, what to do, where to get some pizza, and how to have the most amazing time at one of the seven modern wonders of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Colosseum. It's over 2,000 years old, and in its heyday, held up to 85,000 spectators. Now, we all know the sort of events that used to go on here, gladiatorial fights, plays, and sending humans to their death, making them fight animals, all as a form of grisly entertainment. It fell into a state of disrepair at the fall of the Roman Empire, when gladiatorial fights weren't popular anymore, and because of various popes plundering the stone to build their churches. Nowadays, it's a modern tourist attraction that you can go and pay and see, but as it's the most visited attraction in all of Rome, you're going to need a ticket. I strongly urge you to go to the website and book tickets in advance, because joining the queue for a walk-in ticket is damn near impossible, particularly in the summer months when Rome is incredibly busy. You can take your chances at the ticket office if you want to, but the success rate is incredibly low. Once you leave the metro station, it's literally right in front of you. It's incredibly easy to find. Before you go in though, I recommend that you have a walk around the entire Colosseum. Not just for some nice photos and videos, but to get an idea of the sheer scale of the place. The best time to go is first thing in the morning because the queues are relatively short. After a quick security check, you're let into the actual Colosseum itself. Rather interestingly, the Colosseum isn't this building's official name. It's actually called the Flavian Amphitheater, and is known as the Colosseum because of a former colossal statue of Emperor Nero that used to stand right here at the entrance. When you go inside, and as soon as you see the crucifix, aka where people used to be executed, you get your first glimpse at the actual Colosseum itself. And wow, this place is mega. I've seen photos and videos of this on the internet, but nothing prepares you for the sheer scale and size of this Colosseum. It gets a little crowded here, so don't be too concerned if you don't get the correct photos and videos here, there's plenty of other photo opportunities. There's a bit of a section where you can learn all about the construction of the Colosseum itself, but if you pay for an all-access ticket, you'll actually go into the arena, furthermore through the Gates of Death. This is where people fighting for their lives, and every dead human and animal, enters and leaves the Colosseum. And when you walk through onto the arena floor, aka where people used to fight, it's pretty awe-inspiring. Not just at the height and the width of the building, but also the fact that this used to hold thousands of people baying for your death. If you have the ticket that allows you access to the underground labyrinth, it definitely comes highly recommended. There is a maze of corridors, trapdoors, and rooms where people and animals underneath the actual floor, waiting to come up to the surface. Spend some time whilst you're on the arena floor to sit down and just soak it all in. This place is pretty amazing, and you probably won't come across anything else like this in your life. It's also one of the three best spots that you'll get photos and videos, so if you want that picture-perfect snap, Wait till the middle goes quiet and you've got the perfect spot right here. Round and round and round we go. Once you're done with the arena floor, climb up the stairs and you'll go to the second tier. There's a small exhibit on how the Colosseum was constructed. If you are interested in historical stuff, this is definitely worth exploring. You get to find out how they constructed it, what it looked like in its heyday, and the fact that this place is the modern precursor to most modern stadiums in the world. It even used to have its own retractable roof. Hard to believe, but yeah, this place was pretty advanced. And it's here in the second tier that you'll probably get the most crowded area. As soon as you walk in, you'll get this amazing view on one of the corners of the Colosseum. But it's also the most crowded. As you can see from this footage I took right here, people are elbowing each other out of the way for the best shots. 
My advice is to avoid all of that and walk along the side of it until there's a lot less people. You'll get the same view, if not better, and nobody will be elbowing you in the face trying to take a selfie. The best section to take photos and videos is right here aligning yourself in the middle. You'll see the whole Colosseum from up here, including the arena floor, which is where we've just visited, the underground and the entrance right over there on the other side. The Colosseum looks its best when the sun is shining on it, i.e. when the sun is at your back, just like this. And this is the sort of view that you'll get if you stand in this corner. You'll get to do almost a 360 walk around of the Colosseum. And the most iconic shot of the Colosseum is taken right here on the complete opposite side of the second tier. Because you get this magical view overlooking absolutely everything. I should probably point out that up here in the second tier is where all the commoners and women used to sit to watch the events. The lower tiers are reserved for the more important people. As you walk around the interior of the Colosseum, it literally oozes history, and you definitely won't regret buying a ticket to see this place. You'll go down a flight of steps before getting to explore more of the Colosseum and visit the gift shop, before you're let out at the side of the Colosseum. It's definitely worth the price of admission, but one thing you definitely don't have to pay for is this, the Constantine Arch. Built in 315 AD to commemorate Emperor Constantine, it's a very impressive entrance arch. And even though you can't go right next to it and touch the walls, you definitely can take some amazing photos and videos with this in the background. But before visiting the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill, there's various eateries around the Colosseum. And there's a supermarket right across the street where you can get a decent slice of pizza for not too much money. Fortunately for you, the entrance to the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill is literally across the way from the Colosseum. Now, a lot of people don't actually know what this is. This is the epicenter of the ancient Roman Empire. The ancient Romans were an incredibly sophisticated culture, and many things in the world that we consider to be modern inventions existed here in the Roman Forum over 2,000 years ago. Things like schools, hospitals, roads, gyms, temples, shops, government, banks, libraries, the ancient Romans figured it out first. And when you walk into the entrance, hopefully you've bought your ticket in advance, you'll quickly see that this place is absolutely massive. It's so big, it's very disorientating, and it can be hard to figure out what to see and do first. Fortunately, I'm here to show you all the best bits. The first thing you'll come across is the Arch of Titus. This arch, located at the top of a hill, is one of only three arches that remain out of the original 36. It's historically important for reasons that's too long to explain in this video, but in short, it's to commemorate Titus's victory in Jerusalem. After the Arch of Titus, you can either go into the Roman Forum itself or up to Palatine Hill. I decided to go left to Palatine Hill, which is the main hill that overlooks the ancient Roman Forum, and it's up here that you get some amazing views of everything below you. It's quite a climb, so be prepared for that, but the climb is definitely more than worth it. There's also a nice museum that you can look at various artifacts with, and you can see ruins of various palaces, churches, this courtyard, which surprisingly is still operational, even with modern fountains, and Palatine Hill also has its own stadium. So it's here that minor sporting events would happen in front of the elite class of the Roman Empire. This is definitely worth taking some time to explore, but once you've climbed back down Palatine Hill, you'll come across the entrance to the Roman Forum, aka where the civilians of the ancient Roman Empire used to live and work. This place is vast, it's like the size of a national park, and at this point, you'll probably be confused as to what there is to actually see. There's plenty of things that you should look out for, such as the Temple of Vesta and the site of the Eternal Flame of Rome. You'll also come across the Temple of Venus. It's an ancient temple, yes, but the most redeeming quality is the view of the Colosseum from up high. 
and you can definitely take some amazing photos and videos from up here. Right next door, you'll find the Basilica of Constantine. The size of this place is incredible, but they fenced it off because it's structurally unsafe. But if you do venture next to it, you'll be amazed that all of this was built without machinery. You'll come across the temples of Romulus and Remus, the temple of Antonius and Faustina, which currently houses this rather cool museum full of interesting artifacts and Roman stuff. This long walkway is technically the longest road in the Roman Empire, and it's here that you can see remnants of churches, temples, gyms, and even restaurants. At the far end of the Roman Forum, you'll come across the Temple of Saturn. It looks like a bunch of ruined columns, but at one point held an impressive temple. Right next to it, you'll find the Arch of Septimius Severus. It's another impressive entrance arch, one of the three remaining here in the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill. You'll come across the Temple of Julius Caesar. No prizes for guessing who this temple was dedicated to. And you'll also come across the Curia, aka the Senate's House, the first ever precursor to government. You can spend an entire afternoon walking around exploring these things. And if you're a historian, you definitely won't be bored of the place. If you're not a historian, well, it can get a little bit overwhelming. So see what you can, but be very mindful that this is actually quite tiring. Especially walking along these ancient Roman roads that definitely aren't even, and you'll need some serious leg muscles in order to climb all these hills. Overall, guys, I can see why the Colosseum, Roman Forum and Palatine Hill are the most visited attractions in all of Rome. And if you haven't already, check out my Rome City Guide here to make the most out of your trip. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to the Colosseum. It's very easy to find. It's slap bang in the middle of Rome, so you can't really miss the damn thing. It's big and it's massive. And the easiest way to get here is to use the metro... The nearest metro station, of course, is Colosseo, which will drop you right outside here, the Colosseum. To buy tickets, you need to go on the official website, which I'll leave on the screen here. Please, please, please do not buy your tickets from a third-party website, because more often than not, they'll try and sell you a guided tour that you probably didn't even ask for. The cost? Well, the prices vary depending on what you want to do, but in my opinion, if you want the full experience, buy the full experience ticket, which allows you access to the Colosseum and the Palatine Hill and Roman Forum. Because it's such an intensive day, you can actually split that ticket into two days. So if you are a history buff, I recommend that you do the Colosseum on one day and then the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill on another, because otherwise it's very, very overwhelming. The cost of the tickets really isn't bad. I honestly paid about 22 euros, which isn't expensive at all, but I'll leave the full prices right there on the screen. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, as you can imagine, these places are massive, so be prepared to walk a lot. Don't be fashionable, guys. Wear your comfiest shoes and your comfiest clothing because, trust me, you'll thank me when your feet don't hurt at the end of the day. As you can imagine from ancient buildings, the stairs and walkways are incredibly uneven, so please watch your step if you are going around the Colosseum or Roman Forum. There's step-free disability access in the Colosseum. You can take a lift up to the higher levels and it's pretty flat for wheelchair users. However, the same cannot be said of the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill, so bear that in mind if you have disability access issues. As you can imagine from being Italy's most famous attraction, it can get incredibly busy. So expect there to be a lot of tourists, expect there to be plenty of queues, expect lines for security checks. Honestly, it will take you a while, but so long as you're patient, I think you'll have an amazing time here. And finally, Pickpocketing is a massive problem here in the city of Rome, but particularly around here, around the Colosseum, mainly because there's crowds of people all bunched together. So keep an eye on your belongings at all times, have a lockable bag, and anything that you do have on your person, make sure that it's secure before you leave anywhere. But overall guys, this is an amazing place, and I recommend that you come here once in your life. 
this is definitely one of those attractions that you have to do before you die. If you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on that comment section below. And if you've got any other bucket list ideas you want me to do, tweet them at me. If I get enough suggestions, I'll probably make a video about it. So guys, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. In the Coliseum. You can take a lift up to the low. And it's pretty... If you've got any other... Let's do that again. Please be sure to... Once in your life... Damn, why, why am I not getting that? It's been a long day, man, seriously. <laughs>